There was a time when this great Midwest of ours was part of the spreading plains, a vast area devoted primarily to open grazing lands. Today, we call it the Corn Belt, after its basic crop, which supports the vital hog and cattle industries of the nation. The once open grazing lands have given way to fenced fields and modern feedlots for the most efficient production of cattle and for the equally efficient production of hogs. And as our livestock economy has changed, so the farmer himself has changed. Today, the farmer is an agricultural specialist, employing modern methods to produce livestock whose conformation and quality have been progressively improved by selection and feeding. Our progress is likewise evident in the methods of handling and shipping the livestock. In the early days, many of our Midwest cattle were trailed to market on the hoof a tiresome and time-consuming job. A costly job, too, in terms of man-hours on the trail. But as the railroads branched out across the land, the patterns changed. Time was saved. The movement of livestock made more flexible and efficient. The advent of the motor truck brought even greater flexibility to the movement of livestock, linking the supply sources closer to market. Those motorized carriers of today are symbolic of our progress in producing and handling the Midwest's most important farm product, meat. And the changes here have been matched by an equal amount of progress in the livestock market itself. Changes in both handling methods and facilities. Changes which have been going on ever since the Chicago Stockyards was founded in 1865. From the very beginning, Chicago was the pace setter among the country's livestock markets. This was due in the first place to its strategic location at the heart of the Corn Belt, and in the second place to the great network of railroads centering on Chicago, which made it the logical meat processing headquarters of the nation. It was natural then that meat packers should take advantage of this situation and build their plants right adjacent to the stockyards, the source of volume supply. Then, with the advent of refrigerator cars, they were able to expand and enlarge the scope of their operations. And thus it was that Chicago earned its place as the great slaughtering and meat processing center of the nation, sending out its endless stream of beef, pork, lamb products to serve the American consumer by way of his local butcher shop. But in addition to this great volume of meat, there nowadays are thousands of live animals moving out of Chicago for slaughter at other points. Live animals fed on Midwest farms and sold at Chicago for shipment to packing plants in other parts of the country. Behind this movement is the story of a dramatic change in the pattern of our livestock economy. The story begins shortly after World War II with the sudden rise in our national birth rate. Consider these facts. In 1940, we were a nation of 132 million people. By 1950, we had jumped to 151 million. Today, we have pushed the total beyond 175 million, an increase of more than 33% since 1940 a growth so rapid that economists refer to it as a population explosion. Now, the factor of special interest to Midwest livestock producers is what that growth explosion has done in the eastern part of the United States. Because with the rapid growth of the east, meat packers have established more and more plants
to better serve the special requirements of the region's many consuming centers. But the East, as everyone knows, is primarily commercial and industrial, rather than agricultural. The region does not produce enough meat animals to supply its own needs, and must look elsewhere for about 85% of the livestock slaughtered. So where do those Eastern packers turn for their livestock? They turn to the market that can give them an assured supply of the kinds of livestock they want. Chicago, USA. Yes, we've got a good selection here today. I'm sure we can buy the kind of cattle you kill if you don't tie us down too tight on the price we can offer. What are you looking for? A load of meaty 220-pound barrows and gilts like the double deck I bought for you early this week? Okay, I'll have them bought and loaded out for tomorrow's kill. Hello, Sam. Philadelphia just called in. They want to know if you can buy two loads instead of the one they ordered. Okay, call me as soon as you get them bought. Chicago, as every livestock producer knows, has buyers for all classes, grades, and weights of livestock. This tremendous buying demand is represented by a total of 240 professional buyers. 65 of these, or more than a fourth of the total, are order buyers who specialize in buying live cattle, hogs, and sheep to satisfy the growing demand of off-the-market packers. Each market day, their purchases are loaded into rail cars, which travel on fast, hot-shot, non-stop schedules to the eastern seaboard cities and intermediate points, or into motor trucks, which ply the growing network of turnpikes linking Chicago to the large consuming centers of the east. And how important is this shipping trade to the Midwest livestock producer? Well, consider the fact that shipments to off-the-market packers currently account for 55 to 60 percent of Chicago's saleable cattle, 40 to 45 percent of the saleable sheep, 30 to 40 percent of the saleable hogs, and the trend is rising year by year. This means that Chicago, once known as the nation's meat packing center, now plays an equally important role as the largest shipping market of live animals. It is this combination of local demand plus off-the-market demand which strengthens Chicago's position as the pace setter of livestock prices. In order to maintain this leadership, the stockyard management pursues a policy of constant reinvestment in modernization and improvement, in tune with the march of progress. For example, engineers are currently at work on plans for a new steel and concrete hog house which, when constructed, will represent an outlay of about $2 million, a reflection of confidence in Chicago's future as a livestock market. Also in the planning stages are new rail shipping facilities, capable of setting 120 rail cars at one time and designed to facilitate the shipment of livestock to the important eastern slaughtering points. These, together with the market's already completed truck docks, are further evidence of the new era at Chicago. For with its growth as a shipping market, speed and ease of handling are vital to the efficient movement of livestock in and out of Chicago. Another phase of Chicago's modernization program is the construction of some 400 new sales and holding pens at a cost of over half a million dollars. The new areas are floored with rough asphalt to provide better drainage of pens and sure a footing for cattle. Rounded posts are used in pen construction to lessen chances of bruising. One by one, the old facilities are dismantled and replaced by modern construction, designed for faster and safer handling and better display of shippers' livestock.
new pens are but part of a progressive transition, going forward all the time and designed for one purpose, to maintain a modern, up-to-date marketplace for the sale and purchase of the farmer's livestock output. The efficiency of the market service depends to a great extent on its weighing facilities. So these too are part of the redevelopment program. As new scale houses are constructed or old ones remodeled, advanced designs and equipment are employed to speed up service with continued assurance of accurate weights. And how important that is because the scales are actually the farmer's cash register. Even the market's truck wash facility, completed only a few short years ago, is due for expansion. Its capacity of 500 trucks a week is no longer enough to service the market's truckers, so it too must be enlarged. Nor has the market overlooked that very important factor, the visiting farmer and his family. For example, in order to enlarge the available parking space, the market management in 1958 opened up a complete new parking area just north of Exchange Avenue, capable of parking a thousand cars at one time. The front parking sections, directly across from the Exchange Building, are reserved exclusively for the cars of visiting farmers, and their parking is on the house. In the main cattle alley is a new waiting room and comfort station for visitors. And in the sales alleys are new shelter houses, which serve not only as field offices for commission men, but also as waiting rooms for visiting farmers. And inside the market's well-known exchange building are two attractive modern lounge facilities for the convenience of farmers' wives and children. Here, in restful surroundings, the visitor may enjoy a mood of relaxation, exchange ideas with friendly neighbors, or watch a favorite television program while the man of the family looks after his business out on the market. These are but highlights in the market's continuing march of progress, designed to serve the ever-changing patterns of the livestock industry. And as the industry benefits from changes within the market, it likewise benefits from changes outside the market. The growing network of expressways which speed the flow of livestock into Chicago. And the outgoing expressways which in turn speed the livestock flow from Chicago to off the market packers. Nor is this the end of the story. For alongside every forward step today is the planning of other steps for tomorrow. Progress is an endless current. And as our livestock economy continues to change, so the market too will change in order to serve the needs of those around whom the industry revolves. The farmer representing supply, the commission man who sells the farmer's output, and the buyer who represents the nation's growing demand for meat. In the final analysis, that is what the market is for, to provide service to sellers and buyers of livestock who in their turn provide service to others. And while the scene around them is constantly changing, the one thing which never changes is their integrity. The integrity on which the market exists and which provides the inspiration for a march of progress that never ends.